Hey everybody, welcome to this special edition of The Daily Dose. Today, in the life of the church, it's Good Friday. And on Good Friday, we remember the events of the cross. We remember that on the first Good Friday, some 2,000 years ago, that, we, that Jesus was arrested, he was tried on some trumped-up charges, he was beaten, and there in front of everyone, he was placed on a cross, he was mocked, he was spit on, and he died a criminal's death. And so today we remember those events. We're going to read in just a little bit the story of Jesus' arrest. And we're going to remember how on that first Good Friday, the dreams all Jesus' first followers had, the dreams of the life they believed Jesus was going to bring to them, well, all those dreams were momentarily dashed. You and I, we know what that feels like, to have our dreams robbed from us. And we're going to wonder today, what does the story of Good Friday say to those of us who from time to time feel bound just like Jesus was on that first Good Friday and feel as though our dreams, well, our dreams every once in a while, they feel like they've been robbed from us. I've got a question for all of you, and it might be a, seem like a strange question on Good Friday. The question is this, are you a dreamer? Are you a dreamer? At our house, we love to talk about dreams. In fact, most mornings as we sit around the counter in our kitchen, eating our breakfast, often one of us will say, <laughs> let me tell you about my dream last night. Maybe it's my son who had a dream. He was taking a test at school and he looked around the room and the room was filled with pandas. <laughs> or maybe it's my other son. He was playing Xbox in his dream and all of a sudden he was actually in the game he was playing. Or maybe it's my wife who said she, in her dream, she was at the grocery store and all of a sudden she was surrounded by all her high school friends in clown costumes. Or maybe it's me. I, I, I've had dreams sort of like this. I get to church on Sunday morning and I'm not prepared. I don't have a message and I forget to put on pants. Huh? Are you a dreamer? Here's what scientists say about dreams. They say that every last one of us dreams. Some of us remember our dreams, others don't. But t scientists suggest that for at least two hours every night, we all dream. So what do you dream when you dream? Do you dream that you're being chased? Do you ever have those dreams where you're, you're running and you jump off a cliff? Do you ever have dreams that you can fly or you've got superpowers like some superhero? Are you a dreamer? Well, here's what I'm fairly certain of. Those first disciples, those first followers of Jesus, here's what I know is true about all of them. Jesus' first followers, they were dreamers. You see, Jesus somehow, some way, infected each of those first followers, each of his disciples, with this dream that the world could be different, that the life they lived, the world that they lived in, that it could be a totally different sort of world. And whenever Jesus talked about that world, he called it the kingdom of God. 
You see, those first disciples, those first followers, they were all dreamers. They dreamed of a world where they, they no longer lived under the oppressive arm of Rome. They dreamed of a world where the first were last and the last really were first. They dreamed of a world where their poverty, it didn't carry stigma. They dreamed of a world where their past, their, their problems, their pains, well, those didn't sort of, sort of uh, indicate their social standing. You see, they dreamed of a different sort of world. Jesus always called that world the kingdom of God. It was the sort of world that ultimately this God of ours wants for people like you and for people like me. But on that first Good Friday, when Jesus was brought to the cross, when he was arrested and he was shackled and those first disciples were shackled along with them, Here's what I'm fairly certain of. It wasn't just them, it wasn't just Jesus that was bound on that first Good Friday. It was their dreams, their hopes. I imagine as Judas and all those guards, the police, as they came and arrested Jesus and bound those disciples, I imagine it wasn't just their own physical bodies that felt bound. I imagine it was their hopes and dreams that were bound. And I imagine inside they said, it's all for naught. None of this, everything we've dreamt of, everything we've worked for, it's all for naught. Our dreams are dashed. They're going to put Jesus on the cross just like they put all those other dreamers on the cross. You see, it was on that night that we hear this story that after Jesus had spoken with his disciples, he went out with his disciples to a garden. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. When Jesus said this, they stepped back and they fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Now listen to this. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. You see, in a sense, what Jesus was saying to Judas and to those minions of the empire, he was saying this, if you're looking for me, well then let these guys go and take me instead. Take me instead. Don't bind them up. Bind me up and take me instead. Don't bind up all their hopes and dreams for the future. Bind up me instead. Don't kill their spirits. Don't kill their hopes for the future. Take me instead. Friends, on this Good Friday, here's what I know. Aren't we just like those disciples and Jesus on that first Good Friday? There are all these things in our lives that seek to, to bind us. You know this is true. Here's a list of some of the things that bind us. Uh, maybe for you, it's your finances. You've never figured out how to live within your means. And so you constantly, you constantly feel, feel bound by your finances. Or maybe for you, it's your body. Maybe in your head, you have this image of what your body should look like. And it has you bound because as hard as you try, you can't get that body shape that you think you should have. Or maybe for you, you're at an age where, or your body doesn't keep up with your mind. Or maybe for you, it's that your mind doesn't keep up with your body. And you feel bound. For some of you, you're bound by politics. Politics that suggests that you're either on this side or you're on that side. And it's divided relationships. It's divided your family. You feel bound by this idea that everyone around you is either on your side or not. Maybe for you, you're bound by tensions in your family. In your family, you have all these people that you grew up with, you love them, but for whatever reason, there, there's this thorn between you 
and one of those family members. Or maybe for you, it's losses. It's death. You've been through a divorce. You've lost a parent. You've lost a child. And it just has you bound. You, you can't figure out how to move on with hope. Or maybe for you, it's an addiction that you just can't kick. Or maybe it's greed. You want to live that generous life, but you just can't figure out how to do it. Or maybe for you, like so many in our community, it's poverty. In our community here in Alexandria, a third of all kids are on free and reduced lunches. There are a whole lot of families that are deeply affected by poverty. Or maybe it's the other big three, your pains, your past, your problems. For all of us, we all have things that bind us. We have things that bind us. And here's what's true about those things that bind us. The things that bind us, they rob us of our dreams. Just like Jesus on that night with his disciples. Oh, 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 when Judas and the minions of the empire showed up and they put Jesus in shackles and they attempted to bind up, bind up those disciples, the same happens with you and me. We get bound by all these things in our lives that have a hold on us. And when they bind us, just like they did for those disciples, when we are bound, well, we get robbed of the dreams we have for our families, for our marriages, the dreams we have for our careers, the dreams we have for the relationships we share, the dreams we have for our kids. You see, when we feel bound, well, we get robbed. Robbed of the dreams God has for you and me. Folks, I want you to consider something. On this Good Friday, what if what Jesus said to Judas and those guards is the very same thing that Jesus wants to say to those things that bind you and that bind me? What if Good Friday is all about this Jesus who wasn't just talking 2,000 years ago, but Jesus who's talking to us today? A Jesus who's saying to those things that have a hold on you, a hold on your life, let them go. Let them go and take me instead. See, I wonder if the power of the story of the cross is that it wasn't just a one-time event, but it's something that Jesus wants us to know is happening again and again and again. It's this God of ours who, when Jesus says to those things that have a hold on our life, that rob us of the hope, that steal from us the joy, that seek to rob us of our dreams, I wonder if Jesus would want us to know that that first Good Friday, Jesus wasn't just talking to Judas and those guards. Jesus was talking to those things that bind us. Jesus was saying, let them go. Let them go. They're mine. Let them go and take me instead. You see, the story of Good Friday, the story of the cross, is really this God of ours who in Jesus says, I'm going to take it all on my shoulders. Put it on me. Those things that bind you, those fears about your finances, those struggles with your health, those relationship tensions, I'm going to take it all on me. Put me on the cross. Take me instead. Because this God of ours, what this God wants for you and me more than anything else this Easter, that you might really live that you might be freed, that you might experience real resurrection. Amen. How oh, deep the Father's love for us And all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss! The father turns his face away as. 
as wounds which my thy chosen one bring many sons to glory. 